Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of HVAC system design tutorial with the channel of the world of building design. In this tutorial, in the continuation of the geothermal HVAC system and the geothermal uh, integration into the uh, central heating and cooling system, we're continuing on the schematic that we uh, discussed in the previous tutorial. In this tutorial, I have added some color coding to different piping on this schematic to bring more clarity on how the system are integrated and how the system works as a whole. And in this tutorial, we focus on the cooling system operation. We look at the primary loop and uh, we look at the geothermal uh, field uh, pumping and other supplementary equipment on the primary and secondary side of the system. And in the future tutorial, we would like to focus on the control strategy and how the system operates as a whole. So if you can look at the color coding here, I have put multiple different color coding. In, in a sense, we have a geothermal glycol pre-cooling supply system. And we have the geothermal glycol pre-cooling return, which is shown on the pink color. And then we have geothermal cooling supply. This is the uh, cooling uh, fluid or cooling glycol that comes out of the uh, geothermal heat pumps, as you can see on the top here. And it goes to feed the heat exchanger, uh, where we have to pick up the chilled water and distribute in the building. As you can see on the right hand side here, we have a a heat exchanger here where the uh, chilled glycol uh, comes with the temperature of 40 degrees Fahrenheit and then is uh, transferring the uh, chilled, uh, chilled water temperature into the secondary side of our chilled water line uh, where uh, the chilled water is picked up at 42 degrees and then is distributed to the building, to the cooling coils, etc. And uh, one thing that you can see here is that when you uh, distribute the chilled glycol into the heat exchanger, the, the uh, chilled glycol loses the temperature and then we would like to remain within the approximately 14 degree delta T here. So on the supply side, we have 40 degree Fahrenheit. On the return side, we expect to see something around 53.8 Fahrenheit and sometimes uh, the temperature return is not favorable to what is expected and that's why we're going to have this chilled glycol buffer tank to make sure that the chilled glycol return is remaining within the temperature return requirement. So it means that if the temperature of the return is a lot higher or lower, we would like to blend it with uh, in the buffer tank to, to get the chilled return requirement. And then we have uh, been showing three pumps recirculating back the chilled glycol. And as you can see, there is a reverse return uh, piping arrangement uh, in, the, in here. As you can see, the chilled glycol coming back and distributes back the uh, chilled glycol back into the evaporator side of the uh, geothermal heat pumps. And But something that is worth uh, reviewing here is that before the chilled glycol is going to the evaporator fully, uh, it's merged or is mixed with this blue line as you can see on the right side where the cursor is, is mixed with the glycol supply and then the temperature is tempered and then the, the mixture goes into the evaporator coil of the heat pump. As you can see, this is shown with the green uh, color, uh, where the blend of the chilled glycol and the uh, glycol supply from the, uh, from the geo field is mixed together. So I'm going to show it to you here as well. So as you can see, the uh, mixture is showing in the uh, green color. And remember that the glycol chilled return is 50.8 degree and uh, is uh, added to the temperature of the glycol supply side, which we expect to be 72. So the average here becomes uh, a number 
as an average of these two. So when you supply that mixture, you would like to uh, drop the temperature more off of the glycol, uh, glycol uh, chilled uh, water, and then redistribute it into the glycol uh, chilled water supply line. So this is the cooling side of the uh, heat pumps here geothermal heat pumps and on the condenser side uh, when the heat is picked up by the condenser side it comes into the glycol uh, return where it goes to the uh, geothermal field as you can see this uh, pink color is the geothermal glycol pre-cooling return so we have two stage of cooling here the first stage is that the uh, glycol return as you can see on this line through these pumps is distributed to the glycol field or uh, boreholes uh, that are vertical boreholes on the under the ground so that you have some heat exchange meaning that the heat is rejected in the summertime into the uh, into the underground in a heat sink um, you know arrangement and uh, the cold uh, glycol is supplied into this blue line here so there's first step of pre-cooling happens here and then when this uh, glycol supply which is uh, a lower temperature as you can see the temperature you expect to come out of the floor out of the uh, geothermal uh, line you expect it to be 72 degree Fahrenheit comes into the as you can see comes into the uh, geothermal heat pumps in here and then secondary a stage of cooling happens in the evaporator side of the geothermal heat pumps and then eventually you get the uh, glycol chilled water that is going to this um, heat exchanger so that's basically how the whole system is reacting and other thing is we need to know is on the return side of the condenser of the heat pumps the temperature expected to go back to the ground is not to exceed 79.5 degree as you can see here and to regulate that temperature is to send the uh, to send the glycol return into some cooling tower on the top of the roof to to lose the temperature on the glycol return so sometimes you might end up having higher than 79 0.5 degree Fahrenheit because the heat is picked up on the condenser side of the uh, heat pumps and then it has to be rejected into the cooling tower and then the uh, lower temperature glycol return is blended here with the glycol return coming back from the uh, condenser side of the heat pumps here so as you can see this green light is where the excess or where the um, hotter temperature glycol return goes to the to the cooling tower and it comes back down from here and it's blended back uh, at a lower temperature going back to the geothermal field because that's also the regulated temperature you expect to send into the geothermal boreholes um, so in a sense the two green light t that you can see is a uh, secondary um, secondary line or we, we could call it a secondary loop to the cooling tower given that also there is a pump that extract the glycol return to the cooling tower and back to this line so that's going up and then from this left hand side line coming downward and it's worth seeing and as you can see there are typical other supplementary equipment uh, such as um, automated uh, glycol feed because this whole system is a glycol loop you have to protect the loop from the freezing in the heating season in the winter time so we have a glycol uh, mixed up with the uh, hydronic here on the geothermal side of things uh, and uh, we have other typical equipment such as expansion tank and the air separator uh, that are on the upper stream of our circulating pumps uh, there are other components such as differential pressures and other sensors that are on this schematic that we can talk about it in the next tutorial when we focus on the heating cycle 
and the heating part of this loop uh, as part of this whole uh, system operation. So uh, if you haven't subscribed for this channel of the World of Building Design, please go ahead and subscribe. If you are interested in this type of tutorial, please uh, press on the like button and provide with your uh, comments and feedback and uh, any suggested type of tutorial in the area of HVAC system you are interested to learn about. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.